Welcome to It's Your Case, presented by VetCT.com. I'm Heather Chalmers, your radiologist on demand for this week. Today's example is a 15-year-old dachshund with right hind non-weight-bearing lameness. On orthopedic examination, you find pain on the right hip region. Here, I will give you a minute to look at the orthogonal views of the pelvis that were obtained. This is a ventrodorsal hip extended view of the pelvis. And here is the corresponding orthogonal lateral view. You can see that the lateral view is slightly obliqued. Now, please pause the video or go back if you'd like to look at the radiographs further. And I'll go ahead and highlight some of my findings for B for bone in this case. I already shared with the group that my approach to orthopedic cases is to trace all the bones on all the views. I like to look at the cortex, the medulla, the endosteal surface here on the inside, and the periosteal surface on the outside. Ventrodorsal hip extended views are a great orthopedic case often because you have a built-in comparison between right and left sides. I want to make a quick note before I go into the main lesion. You might see that the patella in this case are ever so slightly off to the side on the lateral aspect. The positioning of the femur and the positioning, um, the angle of the tibia can really affect the apparent patellar position and can make it artifactually look luxated. So we have to be really careful when radiographs aren't perfectly straight, not to overinterpret patellar position. Now, let me talk about the main findings for this case. As you sorted through the A, B, C, Ds, alignment, bone, cartilage, devices, and soft tissue, and you compared the right to left side, many of you will have noticed that there is a difference here in the appearance of the right ilium when compared to the left. I can see that when I trace with my approach of using um, my eye or the mouse to trace the cortex of the bone on all views, when I come up to here, you start to see that I'm losing that ability to trace the bone. It becomes very indistinct. And then from there, there's this sort of amorphic, partially mineralized feature, which I've put some arrows on, that really kind of sticks out the side. Now, when I do find B for bone abnormality, what do I do next? So when I'm concerned about something in the bone, as I am here, I'm going to zoom in so we can see a little bit better. Here we go. I then think about categorizing it in a very simple way. Bone is limited in its ability to respond to disease and physiologic cues. So to keep my approach simple and categorical, I look at any suspected bone lesion like this one with the view to categorize it as either aggressive or non-aggressive. I use four criteria. The first of those criteria is bone lysis. I wanna talk about that one more today. My other criteria are periosteal reaction, zone of transition, and rate of change. We're going to go through each of those things with cases. But for today, let's focus on we were doing our systematic approach, we were looking through B for bone, we were tracing the cortex, and we noticed a defect. And what I would say is that this is quite definitive for the presence of bone lysis. The reason that I'm saying bone lysis is that I see that there's reduced opacity to this area here. The cortex is in fact lost, so we don't have cortical continuity as we trace that edge of the ilium here. There are other findings of an aggressive bone lesion here, such as a periosteal reaction or tumor new bone formation, as we can see here. But this is a great example of bone lysis, where some of the bone is just outright missing. In radiology text, you'll be able to find all kinds of categories for bone lysis. This one, I would probably lean towards calling it moth-eaten bone lysis, so large areas of lucency in the bone that are coale coalescing. Some of the other terms that you'll hear applied are permeative bone lysis and um, geographic bone lysis. We'll look at some other examples of those in future weeks. So once I'm confident that there's bone lysis, I become very concerned about it being an aggressive bone lesion. I would continue to assess my other criteria, which are periosteal reaction, zone of transition, and rate of change is another criteria, which we use if we have more than one study. Once I'm confident that it's aggressive, then I consider to categorize this lesion. The options are monostotic, affecting one bone, or polyostotic, meaning affecting multiple bones. 
In my opinion, this is a monostatic aggressive bone lesion affecting the right ilium. I want to share with you an area where I had trouble when I interpreted this case. I wondered if this aspect of the transverse process of L7 was a little bit more lucent than what I could expect. And I just wondered if there was some sort of a soft tissue mass here, if this could hit both locations. But I did my comparison, and when I went over here, I didn't think that this transverse process looked that substantially different from this one. I also think if this was a primary soft tissue neoplasm spanning these two spaces, that this edge of the ilium here would be more affected as opposed to this edge. So I just share that with you to give you some insight into some of the things that I struggle with when I look at radiographs. So in this case, I would prioritize primary bone neoplasia such as osteosarcoma because it's an older dog with a monostatic aggressive bone lesion. Radiographically, some other differentials, like as I said, a soft tissue mass that's maybe centered here, and there is a little bit of a soft tissue mass effect. Let me show you on the lateral. You can see on the lateral a little bit of soft tissue mass effect here, which is slightly obliqued. So I wouldn't fully exclude that it's a soft tissue mass invading bone. Of course, theoretically, the other cause of bone lysis would be infectious osteomyelitis, but that is uncommon clinically in dogs, and especially less likely given that this is a geriatric dog. So be sure to review the full report associated with this case. Thanks for listening, and remember, it's your case, so please post your questions on social media.